Welcome to this Inventor Tech Tip provided by Imaginate Technologies. My name is Rusty Belcher. I teach Autodesk Inventor at our local office about once every two months, and I'm amazed at how many students show up to the class and they already know a good bit about the Inventor application. That's because Inventor is so easy to pick up and learn on your own. But inevitably, throughout this instructor-led training, a student will look at me and say something like this. How long has that feature been in Inventor? Uh, if I had known that feature was in Inventor, I could have saved myself so much time last week. So that's the basis of the tech tip you're about to see, the top 10 things you didn't know Inventor could do. Let's start off with a simple one. I want to show you how to use the line command to actually draw an arc. I'm going to sketch on the front face of this component and I'm going to start the line command. Now the line command that you're all used to works just like you'd expect it to. You select two points to draw a line segment. But did you know that you can bring the insertion point or the selection point back to the end of the line? You hold the left button down on the mouse then you can drag out and around to create an arc. You can lock the arc at 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Now this makes drawing things like slots very, very easy to do. Simply by holding that left mouse button down, dragging out and around, you can easily draw an arc with the line command. Here's a tip that many users discover on their own. You can actually create an offset work plane with the Start 2D Sketch command. So in this example, I need to create a circular cross section above this flat face using an offset work plane. Now instead of using the work plane command, I'm just simply going to start the 2D sketch command and I'm going to left click and hold on this face. I'm holding the button down and you immediately can offset the work plane to the desired distance. I'll click the check mark and then I'm immediately in the sketch plane. I can simply draw my circle, finish, and in this case execute the loft command. I want to hop into an inventor assembly for our next tip. Many users don't know that you can insert more than one part into an inventor assembly at one time. I'm going to go up to the place component command and I'm going to select a number of parts to add to this existing assembly. Inventor allows you to add multiple parts into an assembly at the same time. Many of us are used to using the free rotate command in assemblies. This allows us to select a component and spin it around and view it from any angle. But did you know you can use the free rotate command on multiple components? If you start off by selecting multiple components and then start the free rotate command, you can rotate multiple parts at the same time. The next tip I want to share with you is the Alt-Drag method for adding constraints. Now when you come to a typical class we spend quite a bit of time going through all the different constraint types and how you can click the buttons and click the solutions and add the desired constraint but many people don't know that you actually don't have to activate this dialog box at all in order to place a constraint. You can simply hold the Alt button down and then drag on the piece of geometry that you'd like to constrain. As an example, I'm going to drag the head here and I'm holding my Alt button down and I'm going to left click and drag the circular edge over and select the alternate circular edge on the body part. This actually applies an insert constraint automatically. And that's the way this method works. It does depend on what type of geometry you select on the first component. As an example, I have a situation here where I need to add a flush to the front of the body of the part. So in this case, I'm going to hold the Alt button down, and I'm going to left click and drag the front face here. Now, at this time, I'm going to let go of the Alt button, and I'm going to select the front face. Now, when I'm selecting the front face, I can use the space bar to toggle between mate and flush. When it's a flush, I simply let go of the mouse. This method makes it very, very easy 
for you to add constraints quickly and effectively. Our next tip involves copy-paste and the browser. You can see in this scenario, I've got the Lego minifigure ready to go, but I only have one hand, and I need another hand. Now traditionally, you would select the hand that you have, right-click, uh, use the copy command, then paste it off to the side, but you don't have to do that. If you'll notice, when I select this hand, you see the component highlight in the browser. Well, if you need another instance of any component, you can simply left click and drag the part from the browser back out onto the screen. This makes copy paste very very easy. We can also come in and uh, just add a, a real quick constraint between the edges to uh, put the part in the correct location. But again if you ever need another instance of a component that you already have one of you can simply go over to the browser left click and drag another copy out onto the screen. A lot of people ask about the next tip in class, and it involves the orbit command. So you're used to selecting the orbit command, and you can spin the part around like it's in a ball. And if you go over to the navigation bar, you see orbit and constrained orbit. And many students ask, well, where is the continuous orbit? They've seen other CAD tools that do this. Well, the continuous orbit is part of the orbit command. You start the orbit command, you have to hold the shift button down with your hand on the keyboard and then with the mouse you simply left click drag and let go in the direction you'd like the part to spin and then it will spin continuously. Let me try that again. It does uh, matter how fast you left click and drag as to how fast the orbit of is affected. So with practice you can get a nice clean accurate continuous orbit. If you've ever wanted to find the minimum distance between two components, you're going to be surprised at how easy it is. You simply select the two components in question, go to the Inspect tab, and click on the Distance command. It will automatically give you the minimum distance, or the closest point, between the two selected components. Now I want to show you one of my favorite hidden commands. I'd like to add a decal to the chest plate of our Lego minifigure, but when I activate the part and go to sketch on it, you'll see that this is actually a library part and I cannot make changes to a library component. So that means what I have to do is open this file, make a copy of it, save it with a new name, and then substitute that part back in and replace this component. Well, That sounds like a lot of work, but there is a great command called save and replace, and it does all of that for you in one command. It allows you to select a component and then you can give the component a new name. Go ahead and select save and now if I look in the browser you'll see that the component has been saved and replaced with a component with a different name. So you can see that I've added the decal to the chest plate but I want to remove this background color. I want to use a color mask. And to do that, I can go in, I can find the feature, I need to edit my sketch. And this exposes, if I expand the sketch, it exposes the image in the browser. You can right click on the image and select properties. And then you can choose to use the transparency mask. And when you do that, that background color, if it's consistent, will be removed from the decal. I'll finish my sketch, I'll click return and you can see that we've removed that background color from the decal. Now I'm going to give you a bonus tip for hanging around to the end of this video. I've placed my Lego figure in an environment. I've got a lighting environment set up and I'd like to go ahead and turn on perspective mode so I can see the background. Now if you ever want to change the depth of your perspective view you do that by using the zoom command so I'm going to start the zoom command. Now at first this simply zooms in and out of your component but if you hold the control and shift button down at the same time it actually allows you to control the depth of the perspective view. So you can make an adjustment very easily and get the correct scene that you're looking for. This is going to conclude our presentation on the 10 things that you didn't know Inventor could do.
If you're a person who's taught yourself Inventor, I hope watching this video has revealed to you a couple of things that you can incorporate in your daily workflows with the application. If you're thinking about learning online or attending an in-person class, I hope you realize the value of having an instructor in the room where we can talk about additional things that are not typically in the book like we discussed in this video today. If you have any questions about the individual tips covered in this presentation, please feel free to contact your Imaginate Technologies account manager or support representative.